Here's J.D. Wicker. He is the athletic director at San Diego State. He's standing by on the Corky's Hotline. He's back on Scott and BR. Hi, J.D. Hi, guys. Where are y'all at? We are in studio. How about yourself? Well, why, why aren't y'all with me right now? Where are you? I am standing in the parking lot of the queue with my gold shovel. I SDSU won the Insta poll. We aren't breaking ground right now. <laughs> oh, we'll He's get down right. there. We'll get in the car right now. Well, I have a question. Hold on. <laughs> what, what are we breaking ground on? On a new Aztec football stadium or a campus expansion? We're breaking ground on a multi-use stadium that serves the needs of San Diego State football and would be a great place for MLS to play as well. And you know, whatever a San Diego State expansion for the for the best of the institution would be. Congratulations. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, JD, if you had it your way, would you blow up Qualcomm and start all over, or would you retrofit Qualcomm? Um, retrofitting Qualcomm is going to be cost prohibitive unless. Billy Ray is uh, bringing an NFL team back. For San Diego State's Mm. needs, one, we don't need something that big. Two, there's just so much deferred maintenance there uh, that it doesn't make sense. I mean, we're, you know, it's it's probably five or six hundred million just to get it up and running. Uh, we'd rather spend 150 to 200 million to build a right size stadium for San Diego State uh, and, you know, any other partners we might have. So, San Diego State, let me just understand this. You're saying San Diego State is willing to pay $150, $200 million to build their own stadium? We could right now, if we needed to, go out on our own and uh, build have $150 million to build a stadium, which we think we can do. Um, How does that happen? I'm just curious. I mean, is that, is that a we have to go start fundraising with our wealthiest uh, benefactors and, and most generous contributors, or is that like a whole thing where there's an endowment or or maybe there's some sort of – business with a, a major you know investment banker type how's that work uh well one there's definitely fundraising involved uh two would be the revenue generated by a new stadium on all of the premium and then there's other revenues that would be available uh you know through the university or whatever it might be um to assist in you know getting the stadium built okay so so you let me just understand this you, J.D. Wicker, the spokesperson for San Diego State, the athletic director, you're saying now San Diego State would rather go at this alone and build their own stadium that could accommodate another tenant. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying that we can if we have to. And we've said this. We've said this months ago, that this was an option that if push came to shove, we could go there. We, you know, First and foremost, we would love to have a partner to build a right-sized multi-use stadium that would service San Diego State football, you know, in the near term, and then the ability to expand in the long term. Uh, You know, and we, again, MLS is really a good fit uh, for San Diego State. We've got two phenomenal soccer programs here on campus. It would be fun for them to be able to potentially play there. We could host the College Cup as well. I mean, you know, you talk tourism dollars and all of that. Well, bringing the men's or women's NCAA championships here for soccer would be a nice tourism bump. Okay. So, all right, let's go through some timelines because, J.D., obviously this has been the biggest controversy in town, particularly in the last 24 hours. So what did you make of the mayor's spokesperson, Matt Aubrey, saying Qualcomm Stadium 2018, anything beyond, is completely cost prohibitive. We're shutting this thing down after the 2018 Aztec football season. That's my read of what he said. What did you think? Uh, You know, well, first and foremost, we are there through 2018. We have a lease. And then, you know, for probably the better part of a year or more, uh, we've been in discussions with the city on what a lease extension through 2020 would look like. And basically had an agreement on what that would be and then it just kind of died and we haven't heard anything since so you, you wait san diego state had an agreement with the city of san diego to extend the lease to 2020 and then you're saying that the city of san diego all of a sudden they've dropped the ball here we we had verbally agreed to what the language would be and had shared uh, shared those drafts and had agreed on what a draft would look like and we have called and asked to uh, understand 
when we would be seeing that um, signed, and we have not received any responses. They're okay. not, they're not even responding to your phone call. Um, we have not. I, no, they've responded to our phone call, but there's no update on where that lease is. Right. Apparently well, that this this mention. Yeah. So okay. So JD, play the timeline out now. Let's say that you don't get your lease extension to 2020. Let's say they close Qualcomm after the 2018 season. Okay. I'm sure you've heard by now that earlier today on the Dan Cilio show, a Padre representative, a guy by the name of Gruppner, who is the chief operating officer of the Padres, very rarely seen or heard, but Ron Fowler bailed today and Gruppner filled in. He said, we can help San Diego State play 2019 football there, but after that, we can't do it. What do you think about one season in Petco Park? Uh, you know, ideally, and I understand where the Padres are coming from. They have a, a baseball stadium, and they're in the middle of their baseball season in September. And I fully expect that, uh, you know, Ron Fowler and Peter Seidler believe in them, that they're going to get the Padres back um, in the playoffs. So it becomes problematic in October. But if we had to play there for the 2019 season, then, we, you know, that's a, a great opportunity. And, you know, there's some pretty cool games that go on in baseball stadiums around the country. They play a bowl them. game in Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wrigley Field has been, you know, refitted or whatever it might be, so Northwestern can play football games there now. I saw I saw Cal play up at AT and T Park in San yep. Francisco, so I've seen it. Okay, but how big of a stadium would you want? Just to be clear, as you said, you know earlier, hey, we want to build our own state. How big of a stadium would that be? Yeah, I think starting out in the thirty-five thousand seat range is a good is a good place for us to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we started the way back with Jim Sterk and, and crew started at 40,000 and FS was at 18. And, you know, we settled on 30. And while I think that's a little bit small, I think 35,000 is where we need to be. Okay. We're talking to J.D. Wicker. He's the athletic director at San Diego State about this controversy uh, that is Soccer City, which has turned into soccer versus San Diego State, unfortunately. Um, okay. So, again, playing the timeline. 2018 Qualcomm closes, 2019 you go down to Petco Park. Hypothetically, Soccer City fails at the polls, or maybe even never gets on the ballot. You with me? Yes. Okay. So how? where would San Diego State play in 2020 if Qualcomm's closed and the Padres say we can't accommodate you? Where does San Diego State play in 2020 if Soccer City doesn't happen? Then what? Well, our goal would be that we can either lease or purchase property from the city in Mission Valley, because uh, as, as you look at all of the plans, whether it be the initiative or any other one that's been floated out there, there's a stadium involved. So obviously that's important to San Diego State. It's important to developers and it's important to the city of San Diego that we could lease or purchase property to build a multi-use stadium, and we would start down that process so that we could open a stadium in September of 2020. But let me ask you this. You say that, and yet the statement from San Diego State yesterday said, we want a transparent RFP. We want a request for proposal. We want lots of developers to have their shot. So so if if you want the RFP on one hand, how how do you all of a sudden say, well, we can quickly buy or lease a piece of land? How could that possibly happen in in terms of making it quick enough so that you guys could start getting getting going here on the construction? Uh, you know, to open that. the stadium in September of 2020, you, uh, the sale or the lease of the land for that 15 acres of the property and the other 150 or whatever would then go into the RFP. So it would be knowing that there is a stadium that's a multi-use stadium, uh, and if the city says you need to uh, design it in such a way that it's expandable for NFL, if the NFL ever comes back, I've, uh, we've had that discussion as well. Right, but you, uh, but you know how things... internal but JD, consultants, then but, we could do that. But, J.D., you know how things go here in San Diego. Things take forever. In fact, <laughs> more often than not, they take forever because nothing ever gets done. So, I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. It's November of 17. Hypothetically, this thing fails or never makes it onto the ballot. When do you think that all of a sudden you're going to be able to get this, this land leased or purchased? Well, we would engage the city conversation uh, if this fails or doesn't get on the ballot and if the city is you know truly wants san diego state football to flourish and they want to get qualcomm off of the tax rolls 
and Petco is only available for 2019, then it would make sense that you would have some, you know, that you would allow San Diego State to go out and build a stadium that's, you know, that fits and that still uh, reserves the majority of the land for that RFP process for a future West Campus for San Diego State, a river park, um, you know, how, residential, uh, whether it's market rate or affordable, and some commercial and some retail that's built to an appropriate density for Mission Valley. I'm trying to figure this out, though, now. So you've heard um, reports about how expensive it would be to fix the land at Qualcomm before you could ever even build on it, right? Uh, I am familiar with construction and, yes, what it looks like down there. Okay, so in other words, if let's say you're going to build a $150 million stadium, it's not just $150 million, right? I mean, it's there's a lot more cost involved than just the stadium cost because there's there's land preparation issues potentially got to pay somebody's got to pay to take down Qualcomm it just would seem to me that it's more expensive than just 150 to 200 million dollars is that am i thinking about this right well it depends on if you're what your what's the development look like if we're only developing the area around the stadium such as you know you've got the stadium and you develop that immediate area and then you're using the current parking lot until uh, such time as an RFP goes forward and is dealing with the rest of that, then, you know, as we've talked internally and with consultants, we feel that that's reasonable. What, what, what is reasonable? That we can build a stadium for $150 million down there. Huh, okay. And, and land preparation costs, that, that, that's all added into this. It's all figured in. Yes. Okay, very interesting. We're talking to J.D. Wicker. He is the athletic director at San Diego State. So what happened with the FS slash mayor's office that you guys decided to cut off communications? You know, we've been discussing for, you know, close to two years with FS and then with the mayor's office in the recent term. And, you know, quite frankly, our vision for what we see Mission Valley, San Diego State's vision of Mission Valley is not compatible with what their vision of Mission Valley is. Is Uh, San Diego State behaving in an entitled way? In other words, people are listening and they're going, why do you, why are you guys entitled to, to this mission Valley land? And and it's just, it's people's question. Why is that? Why, why is San Diego state entitled to this land? Um, you know, I think the biggest piece is we have a duty to the citizens of San Diego, to the state of California, to, um, you know, continue the mission of San Diego state university. And that's, the education of the citizens of, you know, San Diego, the citizens of California, or anybody else that applies to San Diego State. And we recognize that 238 acres on the Mesa uh, is not enough for us to continue building uh, the institution that we want to. You know, we've said it before, UCSD has 2,000 acres, we have 238. So we're looking to be able to grow San Diego State uh, the, an e, a huge economic engine in the city of San Diego and make it a top 50 research institution and something that, one, the citizens are proud of, and two, it continues to be an economic engine and educate uh, our future citizens. How does expansion guarantee that it becomes a top 50 research institution? Uh, well, it allows you the opportunity to continue growing your research, tech transfer. I mean, that's one of the big pieces of it is to grow research, to continue growing that number and those opportunities. So we recognize that being landlocked on the Mesa is going to handicap that. So, you know, we have very smart people uh, across campus that understand that. And, you know, right now we have a lot of, of research happening throughout San Diego and space that's leased that we could congregate into one area on Mission Valley. So you have a lot of smart people working on this. you got two dumb people that are listening to you talk right now and a lot of other dumb people that are listening. <laughs> what I don't quite understand is, is, is because you know how people say, well, how do you guarantee that you're going to get this soccer team should you get this vote passed? There's no guarantee that the MLS is going to give the, 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 the soccer team expansion to San Diego. But I mean, I feel pretty confident that it's gonna, it would happen. But I'm wondering, for people that are on the fence on this, how do you guarantee that more land equals more research and gets you to where you want to be as an institution and as an athletic department? Uh, you know, I would say looking at 
you know, what other schools have done. Uh, I've talked quite a bit about what Georgia Tech did with Technology Square in Atlanta. Uh, that's a prime example where they jumped across the interstate, uh, partnered with the city and the state to build an overpass and built mixed-use retail, built a hotel conference center, moved their business school. And did it, and and did it, did it improve Georgia Tech's uh, academic yeah. standing? It has improved Georgia Tech's academic standing. You look at where their business school was 20 years ago and where it is today, it's, it's a highly rated business school. Uh, it led the transformation of Midtown Atlanta into one of the hottest places to live and build right now. And a lot of that can be traced back to Georgia Tech making the commitment to we need to expand our campus, and the only way to do that is to jump across the interstate and as soon as they finish the latest building they'll finish, it will take it, I think, to 2 million square feet of commercial that, yes, the university uses some of that, but they're bringing in a lot of Fortune 500 companies, uh, entrepreneurs, other folks that are leasing space from the university, and thus, you know, there's taxes that go back to the city. I mean, that's one of the things that seems to be uh, a, a lot of misinformation out there that if you give the land to San Diego State, the city doesn't receive anything. Well, that's just incorrect. What does the city receive? The city has, depending upon how we build that out, and if we're leasing space, um, whether it's retail, mixed use, or whether we're uh, leasing it to other corporations, there's types of taxes that go back to the city. So San Diego State wants to become a developer. <clears throat> Um, I don't know that I'd say that we want to become a developer. We want to expand the mission of the university, um, and thus there is some development in that, yes. And, you know, that's going to also generate uh, revenue back to the university at a time when we see, you know, state funds are dwindling to a certain extent, and a lot of, uh, you know, keeping the university going relies on fundraising. So this is something that helps us. So we're talking 20 years now, though. I mean, you just said it. It's like wow. Georgia Tech, it was 20 years. Yeah. You look at their business school where it was 20 years ago versus where it is today. So we're looking at 20 years for, be, before San Diego State would get into that top 50 research category that we're talking about. We're, we're looking 20 years out from now, right? Uh, it could potentially be that. I don't, you know, I, I can't put a timeline on what it would be. But, but in Georgia Tech's case, it took 20 years. I'm sorry, what was in, that? In Georgia Tech's case, it took 20 years. For the business school to move to where it was. Mm -hmm. Can can the city sell the land to San Diego State? Sure. We, we've never asked for free land. We've asked for the same deal that they would give to any other developer. If that's a 99-year ground lease for $10,000, then so be it. If it's fair market value, then let's sit down and talk about what fair market value is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, listen, I, I get a lot of texts from inside the Ma Manchester Financial Group, and they say they're working with you guys to uh, to work on a stadium deal and to give you guys 40 acres of land at the Mission Valley site. Have you had any conversations at all with the Manchester Financial Group? I have had a couple of meetings with the Manchester Financial Group as they laid out what their plan was. Okay. And when do you think, if given the conversations you've had, we might all find out what their thought is for you guys? Uh, you would have to ask the Manchester group mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, I, I guess I'll have to do that, which, which I've done many times. <laughs> well, this is all very interesting, J.D. I mean, it's not going anywhere, man. It's just going to be it's going to be an ongoing debate. Whether it gets on the ballot, uh, we'll have to see. But if it does, it's, uh, it's certainly becoming – it's kind of you guys against them, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's more – we're looking to – uh, build a process that allows, you know, other opportunities to be presented so that the, you know, the citizens of San Diego that are going to vote on this truly know what what opportunities are out there. Okay, so if there so if if five developers all get a chance to present and the city decides this is the best one of the five, just what if somebody has some insanely genius plan that the city of San Diego, the deal is too good, they can't pass it up. It's a huge financial win for the city of San Diego and the taxpayers of San Diego. And if, in this hypothetical that I'm, bu I'm building for you, it has no land for San Diego State and no stadium, then what? I mean, you're saying open it up for discussion. What if somebody comes up with a brilliant, brilliant plan that has nothing to do with San Diego State or a stadium? Then what? 
Uh, you know, I would look at it and say, you know, if the citizens of San Diego thought that was the best, then the interest of higher education aren't at the forefront, which I would say higher education is, you know, a foundation of any great city. Uh, we have UCSD, we have USD and SDSU, and we have a chance to grow higher education, which, um, you know, obviously educates citizens, turns out uh, 10,000 graduates like we have this weekend, a majority of which will probably stay in the area. And, you know, that drives the economy of San Diego. Those people are paying taxes. They're spending their money. They're listening to 1090 right now. They're building businesses. All of that seems reasonable. But the question is, you know, are the citizens of San Diego, if given the chance, will they vote for this plan or or will they wait to see what's better? J.D., it's always good to talk to you. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for being available. Guys, I appreciate it very much. Linda, good to, good to talk with you as well. J.D., and, thank uh, you. Look forward to doing it again soon. Absolutely. We're going to do it many times. It was great to see you earlier this week. Thanks, J.D. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. There's J.D. Wicker, the athletic director at San Diego State.